Hello, this is Dr. Oliver Per, and this is the second part of my introduction to mediation and moderation. I will firstly summarize some of the key concepts uh, from the first presentation. I have said that mediation answer, answers questions about how predictor influence outcomes. And I have introduced a simple ordinary d-square based mediation model uh, where the total effect from x to y from a predictor x to an outcome y is partitioned into different effects a direct effect c which represents the direct effects of predictor x on outcome y and an indirect effect represented by the multiplication of paths a and b which represents how the effect of X is transmitted to Y through M. The key inferential tests concern the indirect effect A, B, and this requires resampling methods, for example, bootstrapping or Monte Carlo to estimate the confidence intervals and the distribution of this indirect effect. In this presentation, we'll talk firstly about confounding. I will then present a case where the analysis and the mediation model will involve multiple mediators, and I will talk about longitudinal mediation models. It is important to always keep in mind that mediation models are causal models. They make assumptions about causal mechanisms and causal links. Therefore, it's important to think fair, carefully about the causal mechanisms we assume in a model and how we can control for the threats to the validity of the arguments we are putting forward with our models. If the predictor X in a model is an experimental variable, for example, treatment that participants receive if they are randomly selected to receive it, as long as participants who receive the treatment and those who don't are otherwise treated in the same way during the study, we can be confident that the treatment is the only plausible cause for differences in the outcomes between the two groups. But often we cannot run experimental studies. And furthermore, while the predictor in an experimental study can be randomly allocated, the mediators cannot and the mediators are assumed to causally influence the outcome. So the association between the mediators and the outcome may be due to a third variable that influence, influences both. I will uh, work again with the, more, the example I made in the previous presentation. And this is an example of a treatment that is applied uh, on our soil in order to promote successful, successful growth of our plants. The treatment may work partly because it effectively eliminates fungi and other organisms that hinder plants' growth. However, there are some possible confounders that may explain this causal link. For example, the pH or acidity in our soil in and terrain may explain this uh, causal link because the pH can negatively influence fungi and on the other hand the same level of pH can be optimal for plants. Uh, this is a fictional example obviously but some confounders like that are possible. So in this case the indirect effect of treatment through fungi reduction will be biased and confounded. And we we'll, would argue that the mechanisms of action of the treatment uh, involve fungi, but this, will, this would not be true if some other uncontrolled mechanism H can explain the link between the mediator and outcome. I take this chance uh, to add an important clarification we need to be clear about what is being confounded in this example. And here, the pH confounder is a confounder of the indirect effect from the treatment to the outcome. In other words, if you are interested in better understanding the mechanism of action of the treatment, then you would 
want to make sure you control for counter arguments that may indicate that the treatment is not actually is not actually working by acting on fungi or other mediators, but there may be some other mechanism at play. However, if my main interest was testing if the treatment works and promotes plant growth, whether the mechanism of action are through fungi or involve pH does not really interest me. And all I'm asking is whether the treatment is making the plants grow or not. If the treatment was testing using an experimental procedure uh, on a substantial number of samples, I can be confident it works if I notice that there is better growth after the, pro the treatment. The point is that pH in this example does not confound the total effect of the tree from the treatment to the outcome. If my interest in, is, is in estimating the total effect or whether the treatment works, I don't need to adjust for other confounders like these. However, if your interest is in understanding the mechanism of action of the treatment, then pH is an important source of confounding of the supposed hypothetical indirect mechanism of mechanism reduction of fungi. And I will highlight an important result for reflecting about causal models when uh, you're building the and thinking about the controls you need in your models. Uh, this result is uh, based on direct acyclic graphs. And here I put the link uh, to the webpage dagitid.net, which is also available as a, an R package. And directed acyclic graphs are ways to represent directions of causal inferences between variables. Uh, the graphs are called directed acyclic because the, the edges in the graphs represent a direction of causality between variables and those do not flow back onto themselves. So they are directed and acyclic. Um, these graphs uh, are useful in represented con representing conditions in which we can correctly estimate a causal effect of a predictor on an outcome and we can add are the variables that may be considered as confounders and that uh, variables that we can observe, but also there may be confounders that we cannot observe. Here, uh, I represented the, the example I made just in the previous slide. And uh, in, the, in this software, in this web page, uh, I can specify uh, that I want to estimate the total cause effect from the treatment uh, to the outcome growth. And you can see here that if I can select, if I select that I want to estimate the total cause effect, uh, it I am biasing paths that I need to control for. So if these were all the variables that uh, were important uh, in this particular study, then I wouldn't have to control for found as if I were just interested in the total effect of the treatment. However, if I want to estimate the direct effect of the treatment or conversely the indirect effect, I will have to control for fungus and pH level. The point I, I, is that the directed uh, acyclic graphs uh, can help you describe the supposed causal pathway in the phenomenon you're studying and they represent them in a qualitative way, but it can also help you check the type of adjustments and tests that you need to be able uh, to run to uh, identify and estimate correctly the causal hypothesis. So I think they are very useful tools uh, that help you clarify your thinking and your hypothesis and also specify what type of controls you need to apply to in your in your models. So back to an example of confounding in mediation. In an example in the previous presentation, I tested a model whereby the fact of family income on grade 12 math scores was to supposed to be mediated by grade 8 reading scores. 
And again, I've put some uh, uh, scripts uh, in the material with this module uh, that you can follow uh, so you can run the examples on R. But we can think of many factors that might act as confounders in this pathway. For example, maternal education attainment may influence the child's course in grade 8 and grade 12. So it might have an effect that confounds the mediating pathway for reading in grade 8. Another variable that may bias the supposed mechanism through grade 8 score is gender. Girls may be more academically, academically driven and do better in grade 8 and 12. So using the process macro in R, it's easy to control for similar confounders. All, that, all you need to do is add an option COV for cov covariates, uh, where you can list a set of covariates. In this case, I uh, added male and uh, mat add maternal education as covariates in the model, as you can see in the uh, gray area. Adding, uh, adding controls for uh, these confounders, the indirect estimated effect of high income on MAF 12 scores is 2.84, whereas it was about 2.82 without those uh, confounders. And note that in the process macro, the total effect of high income on MAF scores is estimating assuming the covariates are held constant, or else it is estimated while controlling for the covariates. The resources provided with this module, you, you can find more exercises where you can test and apply uh, the process macro in R uh, to estimate different mediation models. So uh, please look at the, uh, the resources provided. Another common scenario in mediation is when parallel mediators are being uh, supposed. In this scenario, uh, the predictor influences the outcome through two mediators or more, and these mediators are supposed not to causally influence each other. And this does not mean that they are independent each from the other. The mediators can be correlated with each other, for example. And this scenario may be particularly useful in testing the different size of indirect effects across uh, different uh, putative mechanisms. For example, here, the effect of family high income on grade 12 math scores is being supposed to be mediated by grade 8 reading scores and by grade 8 math scores. And uh, however, um, for the sake of example here, uh, I'm not supposing that there is a direct causal link between reading and maths, but uh, this is just for the sake of example. Taking this scenario and using ordinary least square estimation, the values of these mediators are estimated as a linear function of the predictor. So the outcome scores are estimated as a linear function of the predictor I inc, high income and the sum of coefficients for the different parallel mediators. So in, uh, if we have two predictors, as in this case, the grade 12 math scores are estimated as a linear function of a direct effect of high income, uh, the C pathway, and the sum of the coefficients, the Bs, that represent the effect of the putative mediators on the outcome. Thus, the B1 coefficient, for example, represents the change in grade 12 math scores for one unit increase in grade 8 reading scores for children with the same family income and keeping the grade 8 math scores the other mediator constant, so controlling for the other mediator. Which means that there are two specific indirect effects in this model, one through grade 8 reading scores, uh, which is given by the product of the paths A1 and B1, and the other indirect specific indirect effect is through grade 8 math scores, which is uh, estimated by the product of A2 and B2. 
And the total indirect effect is basically the sum, the sum of these indirect effects. So in the shaded area here, I've put the syntax that you can use to estimate a similar model. Um, the coefficients estimated uh, through this macro uh, uh, are in the graph here. And the output of the macro can also be used to estimate the indirect effects. So here we have two indirect effects, one through reading eight scores and one through score, uh, math scores in grade eight. And we can see that the indirect effect through reading uh, scores in grade eight is estimated to be 0.72, whereas the indirect effect through grade eight math scores is estimated as being 3.20. In the syntax, I've also asked uh, the package to estimate contrast. So contrast equal one is basically asking a test of difference uh, of the indirect effects. So uh, a test that tests the null hypothesis that the difference between the two indirect effects is equal to zero. And the results show that we can reject the hypothesis that those two indirect effects are equal to zero because the confidence intervals of this test uh, do not cross zero. So we can reject the hypothesis that those two indirect effects are equal. The difference between those indirect effects is equal to zero. Using the process macro, it's also possible to build models that include pathways of inference from one mediator to another. So serial multiple mediators can be included. And here in this example, I assume that reading scores in grade eight casually influences math scores in the same year. Once again, please note that I'm making this assumption to illustrate how to estimate a similar model, but from a substantive point of view, a similar assumption of a causal link from reading to math uh, scores in the same year is difficult to justify. But if you wanted to test a serial or multiple mediators, then you will have to indicate uh, that you want model type six. So you write model six in the syntax of the uh, ma process macro, because this option invokes models with serial multiple mediators. But also note that the order of the uh, mediators after the M option, it's important by writing read eight before math eight, I'm instructing uh, the software to consider reading eight as a as a cause for math eight. So the order of the mediators uh, after the option M so specifies the order of influence in the serial multiple mediators model. I will talk about uh, mediation models for longitudinal data. And in one of the references provided with these resources, um, there is much emphasis on the fact that uh, mediation models uh, applied on cross-sectional studies can only provide accurate estimates of mediation effects in very restrictive conditions. And when these conditions are not met, which is cross-sectional studies uh, will provide biased estimates of mediation effects. And the results can be very misleading. So this makes sense because, as I emphasized on different occasions, mediation models are causal models, and they assume some processes of influence and mechanisms of change that take time, that necessarily take time to unfold. If, for example, we apply, apply a treatment to our soil to promote uh, plant growth, we would need some time to observe the effect of the treatment on the supposed mediator, the reduction of fungi and some time to observe the consequential effect uh, that the reduction of fungi has on plant growth. 
Really and truly, mediation models entail longitudinal data in most cases. So it's important to consider that and be very careful in making causal assumptions without data that, and designs that justify those assumptions. And with longitudinal data, we can also consider more complex situations. For example, here, uh, predictor X measured at time zero at the start of the study can affect a mediator that we uh, observe at time one, and the mediator at time one can affect the outcome, outcome that we observe at time two. But the previous level of the mediator, the level of the mediator at time zero at the start of the study can also affect the the mediator at time one. And similarly, the previous level of the variable y at time zero and time one can have, can have an effect that we observe at the end of the study at time two. So these are autoregressive effects that reflect the stability of individual differences across time. And if we can com control for these effects, we can also have estimates of the direct and indirect effects that are more reliable. So these more complex models can be estimated using structural equation models, for example, which provides a more flexible approach to mediation analysis, one where different types of variables can also be included. And indeed, panel data uh, can be used to test more complex models like these. In this case, the three variables are collected at three time points. And note that the, unless the predictor X is a variable uh, that we can control experimentally, then we also need to model the correlation between the predictor and the other variables at time zero at the start of the study. And these correlations are represented by the gray arrows at uh, different time points. We can then assess the autoregressive effects of the free processes here indicated by the dotted lines. And the effects of X from X to uh, the mediator M, A, are ass assessed on two occasions, uh, as are the effects from the mediator to the outcome. So we have different estimates of the pathways from the in the, from the predictor to the mediator or from the predict mediator to the outcome. And while at the same time we control for stability of individual differences uh, in the process. So using path analysis uh, and structural equation analysis, we can also use this model to test the stationarity of the causal processes. Uh, for example, if the magnitude of effects from predictor A X to mediator M and from the mediator M to the outcome Y change across time. And we can also test other hypotheses about the uh, differences, the changes in uh, variances and covariances across time. Here, those variances and covariances are represented by the gray circles and arrows. So we can test more complex models that can also give us more reliable estimates of, uh, and also more complex estimates, more in, uh, information about uh, the pathways from uh, supposed cause to mediators and outcomes. Here, I put a reference that uses used uh, this approach. Uh, in this study, the researchers uh, show the anxiety uh, sensitivity, which is the tendency to interpret unpleasant physiological sensation as dangerous, prospectively predicted alcohol problems, but not alcohol consumption across high school. Interestingly, anxiety mediated the anxiety sens sensitivity effect on alcohol problems across high school. So you can look at this reference to see an example of how this approach can be successfully successfully used to estimate to provide evidence on uh, mediation uh, mechanisms and how some 
predictors can affect outcomes through other constructs. The use of structural equation model uh, also models also allows to integrate other types of models into mediation analysis. For example, if the moderator is observed over repeated periods of time, we can use latent growth curve models to estimate the interceptor slope of these outcomes, so the initial status and the rate of change uh, of the moderator. And these parameters then uh, that represent a change in the moderator uh, over time can then be included in the mediation model and test if changes in the mediating variable are responsible or transmit some of the effect on, of the independent variable on the outcome. And I refer also to the resources I have created for the National Center for Research Methods on data and growth uh, curve models. Finally, it is also possible to use mediation models to and apply them to sit in situations where the predictor and the mediators are at different levels compared to the outcome. For example, in this scenario, uh, we have children who are clustered within classes in a school. The intervention may be delivered at the level of classes, and uh, the moderating mechanism that we hypothesize can transmit part of uh, the effects of the in, in, in intervention, maybe also at the class level. For example, the intervention may work by improving teacher-pupil communication. So the intervention is a moderator that is also at class level, and this moderator in turn influences individual children's results. There are packages that can run these types of analysis, and uh, however, structural equation models that also integrate generalized linear models provide a more flexible approach, one that allows to consider observed as well as latent variables in the mediation model and can include different types of variables, for example, binary, ordered categorical, and counts. So thank you for your attention and please look at the exercises provided with uh, this module which will uh, guide you in uh, building different mediation models using. Thank you again. Bye.